Hi boys and girls, I'm Miss Krauss, the principal of Richard Kane Elementary School. Welcome back. Superintendent McCauley, where are we headed today? Hi students, today we will be visiting a famous building that happens to be right here in downtown Bartlesville. Did you know that every year thousands of people come from all over the world to tour this building and today we'll get to go along with them. Are you kidding? Are you talking about the Price Tower? Oh my gosh, I love the Price Tower. I can remember the first time that I went, I think it was in third or fourth grade, my mom took me and I remember thinking, where are we? I'm so excited. Okay, boys and girls, sit back and get ready for your tour. Remember, after the tour, we'll meet back here and have some discussion questions. Enjoy. Hi, welcome to Price Tower. I'm Rick Lloyd, the executive director here, and I'm so glad that you're gonna come along with us and see the Price Tower and what it all is about. Let me tell you a little bit about the building. You've probably driven by it. You've probably seen what it is but we're gonna show you what it's all about. This building was originally designed by a famous American architect named Frank Lloyd Wright. And he designed this originally in the 1920s to be among the uh, skyscrapers in New York City. Well, that didn't happen. And it took 25 years for him to meet a client who was interested in building this uh, amazing tower. But what happened was it wasn't in New York City it escaped and came to the plains of Oklahoma. And so Frank Lloyd Wright dubbed this building the tree that escaped the crowded forest. Now, this building is 65 years old, which means it's probably older than your grandparents and probably most of the people that you know, but it's still an iconic and amazingly historic building. So, why don't you come along with me and we'll see it. Come on, let's go. Okay, here we are in the entrance, and if you'll notice, there's a beautiful mural that we've had here in our lobby for a number of years. Now, a couple of things about that before we go into our art gallery is notice the copper. This is gonna be a theme throughout the entire building. So, come on, let's go into the art gallery now. So, welcome to the art gallery. Now, I know it doesn't look much like an art gallery right now because usually there's beautiful artwork that's all over these walls. And sometimes we have statues and monuments that are in here as well. We also have had a number of kids art and maybe your art has even been in here or some of your friends or family. So we really open this up to the public. Lots of art and, and letting people display their items. So now what we're doing is we're transitioning this into a restaurant. So what you're gonna be able to do is you're gonna be able to eat amongst the artwork or amongst your artwork if it's in here on the walls. So we've got a plaza outside too for outdoor dining. So come on, let's go ahead and see what's outside. So here we are at the plaza, our outdoor restaurant. Normally, there'll be a ton of people out here that are eating and experiencing the great food that we have here at the Price Tower. It's right next to the Tower Center at Unity Square. You've probably been here, and if you haven't, bring your parents along. It's a great way to see the tower as never before. So let's go on inside now, come on. One of the most unique things we have here at the tower are the elevators. Not only are they red, they are really small. So they're tiny in the fact that you can only get about two or three people in there at a time. So let's go up into the tower and take a look. Come on. So here we are on the 15th floor in our fine dining restaurant, Copper. Did you know that the entire outside of this building is weathered copper? All that green is copper. The great thing about coming up to Copper and having dinner is that you can celebrate your birthday or a special occasion and look outside at the amazing views that are the Bartlesville area. One of the other great things about the Price Tower is we have a hotel here. So we have 19 rooms and some of them are two story, which means that these used to be original apartments in 1956. So people lived up here in the bedroom and downstairs was the living and the dining space. We're gonna look and see what one used to look like in 1956, but for now, let's take a look at what they look like as a hotel room. So here we are in the downstairs 
part of the hotel suite. So this is the living room. We have a small dining room. And in that little room in there is a kitchen. There's also a half bath right behind that door. So now let's go up and see what it looked like in 1956 when it was a real apartment. So here we are on the 17th floor in what was the Price family's personal apartment. This was their living space. They had a beautiful fireplace made out of copper. The dining room table, which is built in. And look at those chairs. Do those look comfortable at all? But notice that the back of the chair is a replica of the Price Tower. Now, I've got one more surprise I want to show you, so let's go to the top of the building to the 19th floor. And here we are on the top floor of the Price Tower. This is the 19th floor, which was the office of Mr. H.C. Price. This was the H.C. Price Oil Company's corporate headquarters, and they had about six floors in this building. They also had optometrists and doctors. There was a beauty shop in here. This building was created for people so that they could work and live and shop all in the same building. Now, can you imagine having an office like this? And look at this. Mr. Price had his own fireplace. Now, I've got one more surprise for you, so come this way. This is a book that was written about Frank Lloyd Wright when he was a little boy. It's called The Shape of the World, and it was written by K.L. Going and illustrated by Lauren Stringer. One night, a mama rocked a baby in an old wooden chair. Someday, she whispered, you will build beautiful buildings. The baby smiled and cooed. He did not know about beautiful buildings. He hadn't seen soaring skyscrapers or elegant museums, but someday he would learn. When the baby grew into a boy, his mother gave him gifts, cubes, spheres, cones, pyramids, cylinders. The boy loved the smooth shapes. They felt soft against his fingers and heavy in his palm. Start again here. Yeah. It was fun to build them up and knock them down. He loved to stack them this way and that, that way and this, they could grow tall or wide, flat or round. Aha! The boy had learned a secret. Every shape was many shapes. When he was older, the boy spent each summer on his uncle's farm. He worked hard from sunrise to sunset, but sometimes when no one was looking, the boy marveled at the great big world around him. He saw shapes everywhere he looked. He found an arch in the pathway of a frog, a cone inside the petal of a flower, a triangle in a spider's web, pyramid peaks of anthills, and perfect hexagons in an empty piece of honeycomb. He saw the shiny sphere of the sun and the glowing circle moon. Sometimes the boy hid in the tall grass, watching the weeds bend and sway, studying the shape of a bird's flight. He asked himself many questions. Did the sky have a shape? How many shapes were hidden in a tree? Raindrops made changing shapes, clear and cold. Lightning made jagged shapes, sharp and blunt. The river made smooth shapes, long and curved. The boy loved the shape of the world. He wanted to build buildings as amazing as the world around him. When the boy grew into a man, he became an architect. He worked hard from sunrise to sunset, but he never forgot the smooth weight of the blocks his mother had given him when he was a boy. He remembered the hills and prairies surrounding his family's farm. When other architects chose walls, he chose windows. When others 
set their buildings apart. His were one with the world around them. He built a house like a honeycomb, a museum like a shell, and towers as tall and thick as trees. People from far and wide came to see his work. When they looked at his buildings, they imagined the rolling landscape of hills and felt the wide expanse of sky surround them. Like the boy, they too learned to love the shape of the world. One night, when the architect was an old man, he rocked back and forth in his mother's wooden chair. Her promise had come true. When he was a baby, he had not known about beautiful buildings. He hadn't seen soaring skyscrapers or elegant museums, but he had learned. Some day had come and gone, and he had changed the shape of the world, the end. And look, there's even a picture of the Price Tower right here. Thanks for joining us here on this tour of the Price Tower, and I hope to see you all here in person real soon. Oh my gosh, Rick, that was such a great story. Thank you so much. Mr. McCauley, isn't it amazing that the Price Tower is right here in our own community? I can't believe that we can just go into it anytime, walk around and learn about all the great architecture. Absolutely. You know, one of the things I liked most about the book that Rick shared with us was how the architect's parents encouraged him to think about what things he was good at. Question, have you ever had an adult help you think about things that you excelled in? How did that make you feel? Oh, that was a great question, Mr. McCauley. I especially liked how Frank Lloyd Wright described the Price Tower as the tree that escaped the crowded forest. That really got me and I had to think about it. What do you think he meant by that? I wonder if the Price Tower had been built in New York City, if it would stand out or if it would just get lost among all the other tall buildings. Question. Rick mentioned that the tower had an inn or a hotel where you can spend the night there. Would you like to spend a night there? If so, what do you think it would be like? So Mr. Wright said that the building was actually designed um, and was inspired by nature. Did you know that? And he said it was actually designed to look like an evergreen tree. I really had to think about that. Do you think it looks like an evergreen tree? During the tour, Rick mentioned that the Price Tower was 65 years old. Can you imagine making something that was built to last that long? Question, can you think of art or something that you could make that could last that long? So another thing that Frank White Wright says is that a good architect becomes good because he looks at things from a different perspective. I had to really think about that. What exactly do you think he meant by look at things in a different perspective? Look at things differently. Hmm. So boys and girls, what could you do to look at things in a different way? Ms. Krause, I really enjoyed the tour of the Price Tower today. I so enjoy all of our field trips and really look forward to the next one. Absolutely, I agree. I can't wait to see where we go next time. Boys and girls, we'll see you soon.